Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Andrew Campbell. I'm going to give you a guide for food, beverages, what to avoid, what to eat while you're undergoing treatment for molds and mycotoxins. And I, I emphasize here, and this is critical, that you're doing the right treatment. The right treatment, go to the My Micro Lab YouTube channel and look, watch my video on um, uh, treatment. It's the, called the treatment paradigm. So let's start. Just to let you know, I've published over 100 studies. Um, I've got chapters in medical textbooks. Um, I've got... Uh, uh, I've lectured at on the subject in several different universities, University of Texas, uh, in Canada, University of Vancouver, Harvard University School of Medicine, uh, Oxford University in England, et cetera. Why can I why am I asked to lecture? Because I have the credentials. Um I've successfully treated uh, 16,000 patients, almost 16,000, for the effects of mold and mycotoxin. I base my diagnostic and treatment methods on medical science and medical facts, not what the internet says, not these so-called experts throughout the internet who've never taught at a single university, have never published anything in a medical journal or in a me medical textbook, who just may have published a book or a pamphlet, but anyone can do that. You can do that. So I'm the real deal. Um, in going on about this issue, I do this to educate people. I encourage everyone out there who sees patients um to email me i'll be happy to help and educate teach send you what you need so you can read it and these are based on medical and, and scientific facts and evidence okay and i don't i don't want any money for this i don't profit on this and i don't promote anything for profit okay so here we go I'm the editor-in-chief for three medical journals and the co-editor of one journal. Uh, as you can see, one of them is microbiology research, which is molds and mycotoxins. I'm um, all these others, uh, et cetera. I'm on the board of editorial board of various medical journals, so on and so forth. And I'm going to start by telling you what foods banned in all other countries in the world, but not here. What are these foods? Um, you're going to be very surprised. Artificial food dyes found in cereal, baked goods, candy, sports drinks. You look at the sport drinks, blue, red, green, yellow, sodas, you know, macaroni and cheese, and many more. Why is it bad? It, it's meant to make things look pretty, like um, what you see on, the, on your screen here. But they're chemicals derived from petroleum. They're actually petroleum products. And it's okay to have for, for, you know, it makes gasoline, diesel, and tar. It's great for your car or motorcycle or, or motorhome or whatever, but not for you as a human being. And so make sure, okay? So farm salmon. Why is it bad? This is also known as Atlantic salmon. Okay, and salmon is so good for you. It has amazing health benefits. And why? Because of the omega-3 fatty acids. But you need to consider if you're buying wild-caught or farm-raised. Farm salmon are raised in an unnatural diet of grains, antibiotics, and other drugs. And their flesh is gray, which is then they make it pink with synthetic astaxanthin made from petrochemicals. So how does this happen? There's these huge, huge vats or pools, like imagine swimming pools, if you wish, 
and they're packed with salmon. Poor guys. I mean, there's nowhere to swim. They're so packed. And then added to this water, they throw huge buckets of this artificial food and uh, antibiotics and drugs, etc. And then when they've grown to the right weight and size, they're taken out of the of these huge uh, pools. And what's the water that remains there is filthy. You can imagine these these animals have you know urine, stools, etc. So then they fill them with tilapia because tilapia eats all that stuff up. And then they take the tilapia out and sell that. So now I know this sounds kind of not not pretty, but it's fact, okay? Brominated vegetable oil. Where do you get it? In sport drinks and the citrus flavored soda pop, as some people call it. Why it's so bad? The main ingredient is a poisonous chemical that is toxic and corrosive to the body. And it causes birth defects, schizophrenia, and a whole bunch of other problems. You don't want this in your life or your diet or in your food. What about Olestra? Where it's found? Fat-free potato chips, French fries. Who? I mean, I love French fries. I love fat-free potato chips. I love potato chips, period. Who is going to leave the last potato chip at the bottom of the bag, one last one? No, you're going to pick it up and eat the last one and then throw away the bag. Why? Why it's bad? It lower, low, the lower calorie count isn't really that great. And which in it, and Olestra inhibits your ability to absorb vitamins, either that you take, that you bought, purchased, or from the foods you consume. You can't absorb these, um, uh, these, those vitamins. Uh, by the way, for those of you who still use margarine, just let me tell you, it's about one molecule away from being a plastic. Don't use margarine. Azodicarbonamide. Okay, this is found in frozen dinners, like in the picture, boxed pasta, packaged baked goods. Those are wrapped in things. And various breads. Why it's bad? This is a chemical and it helps bleach flour quickly. It's also used in foamed plastics and it can cause asthma as well as a host of other problems. Okay, so now let's go to synthetic hormones. I don't buy milk that has any of these, but it's found in milk and dairy products that where the label says that it doesn't say that it's not with hormones. Okay, so why it's bad? Well, let me tell you. Uh, they're still legal in the United States, but the cows themselves can become infertile and develop inflamed udders. Uh, it, it's been linked to breast, colon, and prostate cancer. So no, you don't want these extra hormones going into your body. They're not good for you. BHA and BHT. It's in cereal, it's in gum, can you chew butter? If you're not careful, meat, if you're not careful, and mixed nuts, if you're not careful. You have to read the label. Well, they help keep the food from spoiling or becoming rancid. But these chemicals have been proven to cause cancer in rats. And I think that anything Anything that can cause, potentially cause cancer in a human should not be taken. Synthetic hormones I've told you about, and here, arsenic. This is a great one. It's found in the poultry. What they do, well, let me read this first for you. It's arsenic. It's in chicken feed. What it does, it swells the stomach of the chicken up. And then the chicken eats more and becomes 
heavier and larger quicker. Okay? It grows, helps grow the chicken faster. And it also boosts the coloring, which makes the chicken flesh look more pink. Okay? But it's not. Arsenic is a heavy metal. It affects the brain. Um, it's classified as a heart human carcinogen by the EPA. And it's in the feed. Now, if you look at chickens today, in that feed, there's two other things. One, in chicken feed, one, besides the arsenic, there are hormones. Well, if you look at the size of chicken breast, because you today can buy the two, ha two halves of the chicken breast, you know, that's about the size 50 years ago of a regular chicken. And everybody wants chicken breast, so they give these hormones. And then, of course, they have to give them antibiotics because they're the way they're caged, et cetera, is horrible. Potassium bromate is found in wraps, rolls, flatbread, bagel chips, breadcrumbs, okay? It's the same as the brominated vegetable oil. And brominated flour helps decrease the baking time as well. And because of that, it, it, it decreases cost as well. But the convenience, is it worth having kidney damage, cancer, and si nervous system damage, brain and, and your nerves? No, not worth it. So, um, ractopamine. And by the way, this potassium bromate is in look at a, a loaf of bread inside of plastic. Ractopamine. It's given to pigs, especially sometimes to beef. Again, all these are banned everywhere else, all right, but not here. Um, it it's it's injected into hogs, okay, pork, pigs, hogs are the same thing in these CAFOs, corporate animal feed organization, CAFOs, where they have hundreds of thousands of animals, chickens, turkeys, hogs or pork or pigs, and cattle, okay? They cause huge problems in the animals, but why it's bad, it, it's used to take, okay, you've seen bacon, and you've seen bacon, which has more fat, and you've seen bacon, which is less fat, okay? Well, this converts the fat into the meat, okay? If we, we get heart problems for it, and it's the highest in ham, salami, bacon, and pork meats, like pork chops, etc. Again, so what, what else do you avoid? Simple carbohydrates. I mean, these are foods that quickly, very you eat and quickly turns into uh, a glucose by going through the liver. And sugar, candy, syrup, uh, juices, kind people drink for breakfast, orange juice, cereal, soft drinks, white bread, instant oatmeal, junk food. And anything that comes in a box in the grocery store, all these are usually simple carbohydrate cookies, uh, uh, you know, uh, crackers, all those. Over time, this can lead to insulin resistance, which then leads to eventually to diabetes, okay? Don't despair. I'm going to tell you what you can eat in just a minute. So here we go with fish and they contain mercury. So all of you who like ahi tuna and all these sushi things and blah, blah, look at this. All these are the content of mercury in these top fish and, well, lobster is not a fish. And canned tuna is tuna, but it's in a can. But all of these contain mercury. So think of that. And where does mercury affect you? It affects your brain. Avoid at all costs. 
anything that contains artificial flavorings, artificial colorings, artificial preservatives, and artificial sweeteners. Soy in any form and don't eat canned foods. So there was a study published that was done by Harvard University. And what they did is they took uh, young people all in their uh, mid to late 20s and took one group and gave them fresh vegetable soup made from fresh vegetables. And they took a similar group and gave them canned vegetable soup. And they did this for one week. They measured the urine, okay, at that one week point. At the end of that one week, they crossed over after five days. So they waited, they had the week, they waited five days, and then those who ate the fresh vegetable soup made from fresh vegetables ate the um the 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 canned vegetable soup and those that had eaten the canned vegetable soup now ate the fresh and again at the end of the week they measured the different um uh, uh, they measured urine what did they measure they measured what is used to soften plastic in the make plastic bottles harder or softer like the kind you use to drink water from etc okay and it was 1000 times greater in those that ate canned food so don't eat that stuff it's bad for you foods to avoid breads and breakfast cereals cake ice cream and other sweets frozen or packaged meals soft drinks and fruit drinks pizza salty snacks by the way the the cheeses that you put on pizza how much food do you think they actually contain or the squares of you know the little packets of each one is wrapped in a plastic you buy 10 or 12 or 20 etc these little squares of of uh, cheeses do you think there's actual food it's processed it's ultra processed food basically all chemicals packaged baked baked goods chicken nuggets fish nuggets bottled dressings and sauces let's talk about chicken nuggets and fish nuggets and something a chemical called transaminase transaminases are used by say you're a butcher and you preparing meat and you cut off the parts that are fat and all those kind of things so you have just the real you know the nice meat left you take all the big fat put it into a vat and then pour this white powder on it transglutaminase and you can watch this on video on on youtube and then they mix it all together uh put it in the fridge take it out the next morning and roll it up all together and press it and roll it out on saran wrap and then unroll the saran wrap once it's squeezed into a tube and that looks just like filet mignon so that's what we're getting fed when you go to the typical chain type restaurants that have okay when you go to the high-end steakhouses they don't have that they have real steaks but when you have when you eat at the at the same steak that costs 50 dollars at a real high-end steakhouse costs now 18 dollars somewhere you've got to wonder why okay so what foods should you eat here we go frozen berries vegetables okay uh, but frozen so either one berries or vegetables that are frozen are okay because they're flash frozen at harvest at where they're picked local honey not the kind that comes in a little plastic bear you can use local honey to sweeten things great by the way for drinking tea 
Use olive oil for cooking and pour it on salads or use it to make your own salad dressing. Pour some olive oil and then put some either some plain some vinegar or or better yet some fresh um, juice uh, from uh, from citrus juice. So I use lemons and um, and put a little mustard, salt and pepper, stir it all up, pour it over a salad. Don't use canola or vegetable oil for any purposes. And use the three B to cook, bake, broil, or boil. And avoid fried foods. By now we know why. Foods to eat also, organically grown foods, fruits, vegetables, okay? Those are best. Eat a variety of colors of vegetables, red, red, green, yellow, etc. Steam it, that's great, or eat it raw, okay? Don't fry them. What else is good for you? Avocados, nuts, seeds, and extra virgin olive oil. Dark fruits, especially dark berries. These are great for the brain and circulation. Blueberries and blackberries, organic. Organic chicken and beef. And use these detoxifying plants, cilantro, cauliflower, broccoli, again, all organic. Cabbage, kale, radishes, Brussels sprouts, turnips, watercress, arugula. Horseradish, wasabi, artichokes. I love artichokes. Beets, they're great. Garlic, ginger, lemons, olives. These are great, great foods to eat. And let me tell you, after you've eaten this kind of a diet for a week or 10 days, you'll never go back to the other. Um, what else can I tell you? What to drink. Anything you drink should come from a glass container. Don't drink beer and don't drink liquor, whiskey, vodka, all those things. You can drink one glass of red wine a day. Why? Red wine, um, the, the, the skin of red grapes contains resveratrol, which is a great anti-inflammatory. Don't drink tap water anywhere. If you like herbs, don't buy those little bottles at the store. Grow them yourself. If you have the bottled ones, throw them out. Because after a short period of time, they themselves will grow mold. So, And try to eat probiotics every day. Kimchi, sauerkraut, etc. It's easy to make. Don't buy the kind you get in the store. Eat, make, Learn how to make it on your own. Believe me, after you've made it two or three four, or four times, you're an expert. Foods and mycotoxins, because people say, oh, there's so much mycotoxins in food and I've got to take binders to pull and all these kind of, all that is hogwash. It's not true. There's no scientific or medical evidence to any of that. So plant-based foods, meat and dairy products can contain these mycotoxins, but in countries lacking the implementation of adequate food safety policies. That includes certain rural parts of African countries and rural China. After they harvest whatever they're harvesting and then they store it poorly. And there's not enough oversight. But we have, there's 43 countries that are signatories that have signed the agreements on mycotoxins in food. So let me tell you some more about it. Here's a study that was published, and it says mycotoxin exposure associated with an onset of inflammatory bowel disease. This is SIBO. But it's the mycotoxins causing it. So all these famous people who treat SIBO, so-called famous, because obviously they don't understand a lot of things, because here's an actual young woman, pre-Itrochronosol, June 10th, and then 
Three months later, look at the difference. Okay. I hope you understand that you get rid of the cause, not the effects. The cause is mycotoxins. The effects in this particular case is SIBO. So let's take food and mycotoxins. This is a study that was published six years ago. Okay. What it, it essentially look at the last three lines. An adult with a body weight of 170 pounds would have to consume 14 pounds of oatmeal. We're talking rancid, smelly oatmeal. Or 20 slices of rancid, moldy bread to have an effect and start doing causing real problems in the body. And as you can see in the above part, a two-year-old child with a body weight of 28 pounds would have to consume 38.8, 38 ounces of ready-to-eat oatmeal or three and a half slices of moldy bread. That's a two-year-old. So folks, as you can understand from this study, it's not going to happen. Forget about mycotoxins in food. So, because th that's essentially what urine measures. And so a study published just a couple of years ago from this summer. There in 91% of milk, there's at least one mycotoxin and 30% had two to four mycotoxins, but they were all below TDI, tolerable daily intake, and easily excreted in urine as are most mycotoxins found in, found in beverages and, and foods. Urine is an excretion. It's where we get rid of stuff that's not good for us or we don't need. So here's a study that showed the following. Urine analysis is easier to do, but there's day-to-day -day variations. Therefore, you should do samples at different times over a 24 hour period for several days. So you're going around holding a peacock several times a day for several days and collecting them in some place. And then you get an idea perhaps of how much is the mycotoxins you had from food and beverages. So again, urine excretion normally indicates mycotoxin intake from what food was eaten that day. Now, the serum blood test that I always have done for the past 30 years and continue to use, ELISA method to detect, this is from this study published a year ago, the ELISA method to detect mycotoxins in human serum comes with significant accuracy, precision, and specificity. And that's what you want for your patients or for yourself. Okay. Binders. Oh, this is the, my favorite because it's so popular. And every, oh, you need binders to pull and all this kind of stuff. Well, animal studies in pigs, rabbits, sheep, Broiler chickens, ducks, turkeys, rats, and mice have shown that certain specific binders can remove mycotoxins under in certain species in very highly precise laboratory conditions. They're in laboratories. They're not running around in the field. However, there's no medical or scientific published study to support their use in humans. They did one study that showed that they say, okay, binders rely on the absorption of mycotoxins from the gut, preventing it from getting into the mic bloodstream. This is the theory. Included are the kaolinite, clays, activated charcoal, zeolite, bentonite, etc. They're effective in neutralizing only one aflatoxin, which is rarely found indoors. It's usually found in foods. They are Binders are ineffective in all other mycotoxins. And in addition, they also bind vital vitamins as well as macro and micro elements of food. So zinc, for example, from foods and, and the, the B vitamins you have in foods, et cetera, it, it binds them. 
and you don't get any of the benefit. So no, you don't need, there's no evidence, there's no proof, cholestyramine included and all that, this, that's a binder too, et cetera, okay? You have to read the studies. This was published in 2019, folks. Not recently. It's well-known fact in medicine. What is again? Here's the most accurate and precise test for mycotoxins. You get both the IgG, which is the measurement of a toxic reaction, and the IgE, which is your mast cell activation for 12 different mycotoxins. So you get 24 test results, 12 for the IgG and 12 for the IgE. And there are 12 different mycotoxins. So remember, this is the most significantly accurate, precise, and specific test. That's from a study from a year ago. So very important, once you've been treated, after six months, repeat the test, okay? To see, you should be done. And here is an example of a patient at six months. This is the IgG. Usually, there's a number of them that are elevated. This one is almost nothing. The kind of a gray, light gray column you see all the way on the left, up and down, that's normal. So folks, if you have questions, et cetera, email me and um, let me know what it is. If you want the pick, my patient questionnaire, 14 pages now, okay? Um, I'll be happy to send it to you. Mold, this is a study we did. Mold, mycotoxins, the brain, the gut and misconceptions. What are the misconceptions? Urine testing, binders, etc. Okay. And then the other one, Lyme disease and mycotoxins. How to differentiate between the two. All right. So having said that, um, email me, immune doctor at gmail.com. And also next Wednesday, tea time. And ask me anything about molds, mycotoxins, Lyme disease, co-infection, breast implants, heavy metals, or any other toxins, etc. Um, that's going to be at 5, 8 p.m. on the East Coast, 5 p.m. on the Pacific Coast. So hopefully um, jo join us. Like always, all these will be recorded as well as this one. So having said that, I hope you learned that we have to be very careful with our food. For example, if you go to the European continent and eat there, none of these things that we looked at today apply that much. They don't use this stuff. So let me explain one more thing about a Greek person. There was a family, mom and dad, and their son who came over from Greece and settled in the Chicago area. When they settled there, he was a boy and he, he grew up, etc. And when he was in his 40s, he went to see the doctor because he wasn't feeling well. The doctor ran some tests and said, I'm sending you to an oncologist. So he went to see the oncologist and what happened? The oncologist says, I'm so sorry, you have such and such cancer. I can help alleviate your pain. There's not much you can do. Uh, probably you have about a year, year and a half to live. So he went home and he saw, he looked up funeral costs in the United States, which are high. So he hadn't been back to Greece. And he decided, well, he's going to go die where, you know, he originated from in, in that, the area his, his family had had been for, you know, for a long time. So he went back. There was a study done on him later on when they went to see him 30 years later. Yes, folks, he was still alive 30 years later. And there's a group of Harvard uh, uh, doctors, researchers who went over there. They wanted to see what in the world 
helped get rid of his cancer and helped him live another 30 years and he was healthy as a horse. So what, what did he do every day? First of all, he lived on top of a hill, no electricity. So he didn't have a refrigerator, which meant every day he had to walk down to the village and he bought fresh fish, fresh vegetables, olive oil, olives, fresh tomatoes, fresh whatever. Everything was fresh. And he'd go and, and walk back up that hill. So it was great exercise. On top of that, some friend, or either he visited somebody on the island, or he was visited by somebody daily. That he always had a little bit of Retsina wine, which is a, a very classical Greek wine. And um, he lived a very healthy life. And this is where we eventually got and developed the Mediterranean diet from this study that was done a number of years ago. But look at how it took this guy, who would, if he would have stayed in Chicago, he would have died because he went to somewhere and he went to a Greek island, ate that fresh, fresh food of all types of quite a variety and vegetables and fruits, etc. He didn't go pick up a can or um, a container of fruit juice. He ate the fruit himself, the actual fruit. He didn't get milk in a container. If he needed milk, he'd get a jug and go borrow some or get some. Um, etc. So it's a completely different lifestyle, but cancer-free, happy as a lark, etc. So folks, I hope um, you've learned some things. Again, ask me any questions at Immune Doctor, and I'll see you again a week from today. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you all very much.